Hello everyone, my name is Juliana Soberanis, a grad track, now graduate student in UNT's Professional and Technical Communication Program, and here's my experience as a technical writing intern at OPEX Corporation. In this presentation, I will be going over how I got the internship, company department and team details, my job duties, software and tools used, my work products, what I learned, the internship and relative UNT courses, my biggest challenges, what I would change, and my final thoughts. How I got the internship. Over the span of two and a half years, I applied constantly to a different variety of jobs, and here's what I did to land my position. I applied to recently posted job postings on LinkedIn, company websites, and Google Jobs. When applying, I applied to all kinds of positions with tailored cover letters and resumes. I also messaged a few people in the industry and alumni to look over my materials, including my portfolio, to see what I could do to improve them. About a month ago, I saw that OPEX posted an internship position, and I applied the same day it was posted. A few days later, I was emailed by the manager herself after my skills listed were exactly what she was looking for. I met for an in-person interview with the manager and two senior technical writers a few days later. They asked about my experience in some software and then asked me a few questions to see if I would be a good fit for their team. I got an email and a phone call from the manager and HR two days later and accepted their job offer. Company, department, and team, OPEX Corporation, focuses on warehouse and document and mail automation solutions with a focus on streamlining and innovating the process for customers and companies of all sizes. Their clients range from very big companies that I'm pretty sure you've heard of and a few smaller companies that just want an easier way to process documentation, mail, and products. My position is in the warehouse automation division. There are two, warehouse automation and document and mail automation. My division focuses more on e-commerce fulfillment, reverse logistics, cross-docking, and micro-fulfillment. Think about it in this instance. You buy something online, and the warehouse is with the object that you want, comes, and it gets delivered to you. I'm part of the Warehouse Automation Technical Writing Team, or WATWA, which is comprised of 10 technical writers, including my manager. They work on updating and creating documentation for all warehouse systems and software, which includes all the automation machines inside our division. My current job duties are transferring hardware and software manuals from Adobe FrameMaker into Madcap Player. This includes preparing FrameMaker files for import, mapping styles in between files, editing images for quality and consistency, and editing topic files in Flare to make sure they match what the original documentation looked like. For this internship, the main software and tools I used were Adobe FrameMaker, which is where all of the original documentation was created, Adobe Creative Suite, which includes Photoshop and Illustrator to edit images and diagrams. Madcap Flare, which is a powerful CMS tool, content management system, in order to edit content and reuse content for future use. Microsoft Teams, which is how we communicated. Microsoft Outlook, another way we communicated. Confluence, which is a library of sorts for all of the um, different teams within our company, including our team, the WAWA team and Git repositories and Tortoise Git. This was a way for our team to pull, push, and commit document changes so that other writers can then come in and use our documentation. Now I will go over my work products, including a revised guide on how to transfer Adobe FrameMaker files into Madcap Flare and transferring a manual into Flare. The revised guide. This guide was originally created by a few members of the WAWA team to help other writers in the group transfer their current manuals to Madcap Flare and Adobe FrameMaker. Ever since it was created, the team has come up with better ways and very specific style changes for this transfer. Going into the process, I added some information and edited some content that fit the tone and style of the original guide. One thing I noticed when I was going through the guide is that some things were outdated, there were inconsistencies or there just wasn't enough information. For example, I had to change the settings in Adobe Distiller for the file transfer. There was not enough information and I had to do some research and I wrote the following. In this slide, you can see an example of what I added to the guide, including the steps on how to change the settings on Adobe Distiller. For some context on the guide revision, I'm gonna go over an aisle manual that I was working on recently and in order to prepare each file for transfer I had to make sure that each heading one and heading two in the original frantic document were marked. I removed all cross-reference links, removed each mini table of contents for each and every single chapter, 
and I removed figure names from written content, which does include rewriting some of that content so it can better fit the removal of the figure names. Next, I had to transfer these individual chapter files from Freemaker into Madcap Flare. First, I had to fix my Adobe Distiller settings, as mentioned in my guide revision, and I had to use the Import Framemaker wizard to adjust my transfer settings and map each style from Framemaker into Flare. Afterwards, I had to check each imported file to make sure nothing was missing or an error occurred. Next, I need to create a TOC for each chapter, table of contents, and then the main TOC for the entire manual. In order to do this, I had to separate chapter files into their individual topic files, according to data practices, organize topic files into their proper order and level, organize chapter TOCs in the main TOC with additional topic files such as the front cover, preface, contents, and back cover. Afterwards, test the document through a build. After everything and all the content is finally inside Madcap Flare, then it's finally time to edit the styles, content, and images. Originally, when some of the content and files transferred, sometimes it just didn't transfer right. For example, on this slide, you can see that one image, all the callouts are everywhere or they're just not there. And then I had to edit in all of the callouts to make sure they fit the original document. So far in my internship, here's what I learned. I had to learn new tools very quickly and adapt. I learned to apply all of the skills and knowledge from my UNT class into the workplace, how the corporate workplace works. I've never done that before. I've never seen that before. And entering into that environment helped a lot. And also, I also saw how all the systems and products at Opex works. They're really cool machines. I was able to see them in person and I'm really glad I had that experience. The internship and UNT classes. I was one of the first few grad track students in the TechCom program and was able to apply classes from both my undergrad and graduate studies in this internship. In the undergraduate classes I have listed here, I learned the basics of HTML and CSS with their applications and then went into depth with my graduate classes. The other graduate classes listed that do not focus on these concepts better focus on documentation design and editing, which I use the knowledge from these classes and better organizing content. My biggest challenges were finding a job. Due to COVID-19, tech layoffs, and oversaturation of certain job markets, it was very difficult to make it through multiple rounds of interviews at other companies. I asked people in the industry and some alumni local for my materials for help, but there just wasn't much I could do anymore besides keep applying. Software and tools. I didn't have any previous experience in Adobe FrameMaker, or Git repositories, and Tortoise Git, which made the entire process a bit difficult to understand. During the interview, I was told I didn't need to have much experience in these tools to do my job, but I had to adapt quickly to make it work. Content and products. I had to learn about the company's products and software as soon as possible and understand it all to make sure all of my content was properly organized. That was something I also had to adapt to immediately. What are the change? This is more of a personal tidbit, but the time it took to find a position, it took longer than I expected and I can't change that anymore, but if I could, that's what I would do. And I wish that I learned more about different kinds of content management systems and repositories. I knew about content repositories beforehand, but I didn't have a large amount of experience with content repositories. And lastly, change my expectations, expect the unexpected. It's a huge journey from being a student and entering the workplace. You have certain expectations about how things would go and they don't, and that's okay. The whole point of this is that it's a learning process. My final thoughts. I'm grateful towards Orpex and the Watwat team for the opportunity to let and grow as a technical communicator while also helping and supporting the corporation's goals. I also want to thank the UNT Technical Communication Program for teaching me the skills I need to succeed as a professional in the workplace. This is the last class that I need to graduate, and I'm very, very grateful that UNT has been with me every step of the way. To learn more about my experience at UNT or at my internship at OPEX, please connect with me on LinkedIn and send me a message. Or if you want to see all the work that I've done throughout my entire UNT career, please check out my portfolio. You get to see more about different projects I've done in the UNT program and how it applies to my position now.